Mrs. Givon speaking, and I'm at Dagger Wing Nature Center in, in Boca Raton, Florida. This is our premier nature center. It's a wonderful place for kids and adults to come. And right now I have in my hand a striped mud turtle. She's striped, female, and she's got, oops, three, she's active. She's got three stripes that are very clear. They almost look like bamboo stripes from the decoration of the bamboo trees. Um, but this is just her stripes and she's got nails and pretty active legs. She, I guess she doesn't like this being in this position. We just took her out of her tank where she was happily hunting mealworms. Um, this is a fully grown mud turtle. How many inches is she? Um, probably this is, about this five is my inches. Hand. It's got to be, what, five inches? Four yeah. inches. Four to five inches. Four to five inches. And that's a, that's a fully grown. Is the male um, bigger or smaller? I think they're just a little bit bigger. Really? Okay, a little bit bigger. She's got one, two, three, four, five beautiful long fingers with nails, little tiny nails on the front. And let me count her feet. Oh, she put them away. Wow, she was mad at me. I was touching her toes. She was mad at me or oh, touching her toes. You were not happy with that. Let me see your toes on the back. Well, she's not letting me see her toes. And she's like, you're going into my private places, which I'm really not. I'm just going to the ex external parts, your outside parts. Is she closing up her second hmm? hinge on the bottom of her shell? She's got those two hinges. Okay, this, this is a hinge, and that will close up that way, or does it go this way? How does it work? Well, the one in the front closes the top part, tucks her head and her front legs in. Okay. And then the one in the back closes up and tucks in her back feet. Oh, yeah, there it goes. There's, it's, there's a hinge. Very nice. Oh, she's so mad at me. I don't see any ears on her. Do they have ears? They don't have external ears. Um, they do have um, tympanic membranes, which just allow them to kind of feel vibrations in the water. So they, again, they have, like snakes, they have no um, mechanism that hears, that actually right. vibrates? Right, no hole or ear opening. There is, oh. But that's not true for all reptiles, is that? No. The lizards, they have ear holes, and alligators actually have ears right behind their eyes. They're covered by a flap, but they have like a, a tympanic membrane, which is more like a piece of skin that covers their ear, which allows them to feel vibrations, kind of like the um, top of a drum. Okay, okay. Now I see that her eyes are pitch black. Mm -hmm. Does she have irises like we do or or pupils that are like us or does she have like the same kind of construction of her eye yeah she does it's just really dark really really dark and she has no teeth fortunately Correct. but i do see a beak and yes. look look at that beautiful neck she is so mad at me oh my god she is so mad at me i'm so sorry but you're going to be famous and we're going to give you a name for all of your troubles we don't have a name for her yet and that's what this entire video is about we're going to have a contest with first graders in my school hammock point elementary school and we are going to have a name for you she does have a tongue does she stick it out of her not usually. Um, it's mostly just for helping her to get the food into her mouth and digestion. What does she eat? She's an omnivore, which means technically she would eat both plants and little animals. Um, however, our little striped butt mud turtle eats and loves mealworms, Meal crickets. What's a mealworm? Mealworms are um, beetle larvae. Beetle larvae. Yeah, so like baby insects. Where do you, where do you baby find insects. them? Uh, we actually can purchase them from uh, pet stores and food supply stores to... So people actually like incubate mm -hmm. beetles? They grow the beetles um, and raise beetles. Uh -huh. um, which... Is it a particular kind of beetle or just your any kind of beetles? Because beetles, from what I read, is the largest amount of insect group. That's right. 
I have done some homework. Very good. I have done some homework. Yes, I have. It's the most abundant um, but, yes. type of animal on earth. That's right. Even with all the insects. That's right. Which yeah. they are an insect. Of all the insects, they are the, even the most largely represented group. Okay, so they're not eating the beetles. They're eating the beetle babies. Right. The beetle larva is the beetle babies in their worm form. Hello, hello, beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. Look at that beautiful head. How intelligent are they? Well, they're not the brightest, but oh, they are the fairly uh, intelligent, I suppose you can say. They, they make their way. They've been on the face of the earth for about 200 million years. So Two, wait, let's back must up. Be 200 right. million years. What was around 200 million years ago? It's when they before first... the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Big dinosaurs, little dinosaurs. Big dinosaurs died out about 65 million years ago. Okay, so, so they... Turtles evolved um, in this pretty much this form. Mm -hmm. They they all pretty much share the same body shape and structure. Yeah. Um, some of them have the hard shells like uh, the mud striped mud turtle here. Yes, hard. And that shell is part of their skeleton, so you can uh, tap it, and it's protection for them against their predators or enemies. So I so basically this is our. Our spine gotten bigger, wider, rounder. Mm -hmm. And all connected together. All their backbones were connected together. So, so these are, these are, now this is called a carapace. The top of the shell is called a carapace. The very outer layer is actually made out of keratin. Keratin which is like is our fingernails. Just like our fingernails and hair. But underneath that layer is bone. That's their skeleton. So that's their backbone and their ribs all connected together creating that shell and okay so tell me what what was this made out of that's also their ribs that's so, their ribs mm -hmm. doesn't look like any ribs i've ever met yeah they're a little different so that's... in their body in their belly they have only soft material right there's they no have... bones inside well they have the leg bones um pelvic girdle the pelvic bones oh, okay okay um, so they have some bones inside there yeah, but the girdle yeah you got a there. They wear a lot of their skeleton on the outside. You got a girdle, but it's not considered like an insect exoskeleton. Correct. Why it's, not? Well, this is solid bone, so it's it's a little different than a lot of animals that we know of, but it is a, a bony skeleton just like we have, but it just happens to be on the outside of their body. Aren't you just so cute? So does she have a nose? She does have nostrils, and she can breathe and. Uh, she can smell underwater. She does have lungs, so she does need to come up for air. She can smell underwater? What about in air? She can smell in air, too, yep. You, you, you smell. Oh, have my breath. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to ask that question. If you can smell. If you can smell. Did I brush my teeth good today? Yes, I did. Yes, I, so, okay. They lay their eggs. Mm -hmm. they on lay, land. They lay How them. far inland do they lay them? Not too far. They're not going to want to have their babies hatch out too far from the water. So when they do hatch out, they can come into the water and, and start eating and uh, be able to hide right away in the vegetation and the plants in the How water. How big are they when, they when they're born? They must be very small. I've never actually like seen this, one, this, but this, tiny, this, tiny. They must be... Okay, so if they're tiny, and I'm assuming that mommy turtle doesn't doesn't nurture them like alligator mommies. Right, she's gonna lay her eggs and leave, so she'll never see her babies, <laughs> or be there when they're hatched. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, so how does she, you know, how how do they mate? You know, where where does she find her boyfriend? You know. Well, the, the male would uh, mate with her. He'd be on her back, and they would mate. And then uh, she would come out sometime later out of the water and um, lay her eggs, dig, dig a little hole in the ground, lay her eggs, mm -hmm. cover it back up, and then make her way back to the water and hope that her babies hatch out and survive. And their range, they are common. Um, they're not a population or species of concern. Um, the range goes all the way from Florida up into Virginia. Mm 
Um, but in the Keys, in the Florida Keys, they are considered a threatened species, and that's uh, mostly due to habitat degradation. They are a freshwater turtle, so mm -hmm. they need to live where there's just pure fresh water. I see. Um, but in the Keys, sometimes the salt water, uh, because it is at uh, close to sea level, gets into the freshwater habitats and can uh, create some habitat loss mm, as a result for the striped mud turtle there. So they're not good in brackish water. Correct. And they're called mud turtles. Though they are usually going to hang out at the bottom of those freshwater environments, a pond or swamp. Do they burrow underneath and hibernate? Uh, they can uh, dig a little bit and uh, burrow. I haven't read too much about um, hibernating here in Florida. Okay, it's so pretty, they're not a hibernating. Pretty but they just... constant temperature, so they're they're not going to be hibernating at least here in Florida. Maybe up in their cooler range, they might want to. Uh, I need that was a good bite. You did a good bite. You're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. You're telling me how you feel. I understand. From one girl to the next, I got it. You have a girdle on. It's a little too tight. I got it. <laughs> it's girl talk. <laughs> Listen, from one, you know, she's 200 million years old, and, and from, you know, I, I can just about relate to that. I can relate to being old and ancient. Look at those beautiful, that beautiful mouth. Speaking of lifespan, they can live about 20 years, and there's uh, some facilities. 20 years in the wild? Mm hmm. And some places have actually had them in captivity for about 50 years. So they do have a fairly long That's lifespan. A great... Well, from what I read, they have a low metabolism, a slow metabolism. So if they have an accident, they don't. Um, they don't bleed out rapidly, mm -hmm. which is what happened to our, our other turtle that we rescued and is okay. Um, so what do they eat when they're in the wild? Well, they're mostly going to be eating all kinds of aquatic vegetation, plants, and also uh, insect larvae, um, little fish, maybe tadpoles if they can catch them. Um, a lot of bugs and insects that go into the water is their main diet. Are they fast swimmers? They're not very fast swimmers. They're mostly going to try and crawl or walk along the bottom um, of that pond or canal, wherever they're going to be living. Um, so they're not built for fast speed. Yeah. So, so what she's going to be eating has to be slow. Slow moving, yeah. A slow, a, a slow creature. Very interesting. Do, do their... Um, Shells have much of a variety from the different areas and the regions that they're in? A little bit different. Um, there's different types of mud turtles, and some only have a couple stripes. Hello, um, and some Eddie. of the stripes are very faint. I think in the northern region of where the species lives, the, the stripes can become so faint you don't see them. I mean, she's. it basically looks as if it's, it was a different kind of turtle that faded. Mm -hmm. It actually looks like fade marks, you know, from an unsophisticated, un unknowledgeable eye. But that's actually consistent with her group of Correct. turtles. Let's, let's, let's get her walking. <laughs> let's see. Uh -oh. Now, I've read that they make great pets. Probably because of their small size, mm -hmm. um, but you don't want to take these turtles out of the wild. It's important to remember that wild animals belong in the wild, and if we take them all out, there won't be any populations left in the wild. Okay, so, so if you do consider getting a turtle as a pet, make sure you do your homework and your research first so you know what you're getting into and how long it can live. Again, they can live 50 years, so that's quite a while. And go um, to a reputable dealer. And go to a reputable pet store or a reptile breeder so that you can get it captive born. Or right. Hatched That's a very important turtle. point because we don't want to take any animals out of their environment ever. We don't do that because we are respectful and it will also likely kill them and give them an early death, which was not our intention for pets. You know, animals that are wild remain in the wild except for moments like this, you know, when they're teaching animals and education. But we have to have proper licenses and permits in order for us to be even to do this, even at this nature center, mm -hmm. which is why Mrs. Givon does her programs in these kinds of educational environments. Let me see. So we've got um, males. We've got the breeding. We've got the food. Um, so how good is their sight? 
they have a, a fairly good eyesight. Um, they can, I think they can see in color actually. Really? Um, so their eyesight's pretty good. I should have worn purple. <laughs> Look, you like, you like this? Oh, eat it. <laughs> I, I, brought, I wore this because I thought it was kind of like your, you know, pattern of your turtles. Now when they grow, how do they get bigger? Well, their shell grows with them, again, because it's their skeleton that just grows bigger as they get older, so they don't change their shell like a hermit crab or other types of animals. Well, a hermit crab is, is a borrowing animal anyway, so it's not native to that crab, to that mm -hmm. shell. Right. But the shell grows bigger. They, they eat, um, and they grow according to how much they eat. So the more they eat, the, the bigger and faster they're going to grow. And I saw her earlier being submerged for about 20 minutes and then she came up for air. She took about five minutes in the air just to sort of breathe everything out. That's just amazing that they could hold their breath for that long. Uh, it was probably even longer that she was under because yes. I only came in and, and just saw the last 20 minutes of her being under underwater and active. It wasn't like she was like, <gasps> you know, panting for breath. She was just, you know, running around looking for those mealworms. Um, but so they can have full activity with that level of oxygen. Um, I guess that's maybe because of their slow metabolism, they don't turn into the um, um, carbon dioxide that quickly. Is that possible? That's possible, yeah. Oh, so that was just a theory of mine. I didn't really know that. I was just making that up. But that's good. That's scientific investigation and queries. Well, let me see what else. So she, the female, you said, have a shorter tail. Mm -hmm. What else does the male distinguish himself as? Um, that's usually the most prevalent feature when you're looking at the male and the females together. I was taught in some of the tortoises that the plastron mm -hmm. in a male is rounder. More concave. Right. And that usually applies more for land tortoises and right. not so much for the, the water or aquatic oh, turtles. Okay, I did not know that. So there's less distinguishing features? Mm-hmm. Okay. And how does she get along with other turtles? Well, she does live with another turtle in her aquarium here at the Nature that Center. Really? And that other turtle is a softshell turtle, which is also a native species here in Florida. And but they, they get to be very large. They get very big. Right now they're about the same size, so yeah. they get along swimmingly. Swimmingly. <laughs> Slowly swimmingly. Well, she's got a stripe right down the front of her face. A little dark stripe. I don't know if I just put that out of focus. She's got a beautiful, mm -hmm. she has a beautiful face. You're beautiful. You must have been a beautiful baby turtle. Yes, you have a definite smile. Don't you want to smile for the camera? What else can we think about? Scientific terms. We got her habitat. What they eat. It does it freeze up further where she is, like in Georgia area, so they can tolerate the the the, the frost. Well, they probably, I mean, under the water, the water doesn't freeze all the way down to the, the bottom of mm -hmm. the pond or whatever habitat they're in. So that's where they're going to mostly be living. Um, so they're probably going to be much less active uh, in the winter when the water temperature does drop. Um, and they can manage the winter without feeding? They could go long periods of time without eating just because mm. they are a reptile. They're cold-blooded, so... They do need warmth in order to digest food, and if they don't have that warmth, then they won't eat, and they'll kind of go off eating or fast for a while until they're able to process that food again when the temperatures warm up. Yeah, these are reptiles. These are not amphibians. They're, they're born on land. They're mm -hmm. air breathers. They've right. never been water breathers like an amphibian can mm -hmm. in its earlier stages. And it doesn't really metamorphose. Correct. So it's always a turtle. Mm -hmm. And an amphibian, like a frog, has slimy skin. She's completely dry. Right, dry, scaly skin yeah. is a characteristic of all reptiles. Well, scaly? How could you describe this as scaly? Well, she's got those keratin plates. And okay. the, that keratin that covers her shell is the same material that uh, would make up snake scales or lizard skin, mm -hmm. or even alligator skin. 
which are also reptiles. Her skin over here, as much as she hates my doing this, is dry. Mm -hmm. Now that she's at, oh, 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 I just touched her hind leg and I could feel her pulling up her back hinge. Mm -hmm. It just moved all on its own. It's so neat. She, she's like, I know you're there. I'm going to close up on you. That's neat. I'm sorry to bother you. This is for educational purposes and it's not torture. I'm not hurting you. I wouldn't dare do that. I would never, never do that. I love, love how she tucks her tail around so that if she's going to close it, she'll really be able to close it pretty tight. Pretty, pretty tight. Oh, she says, I've had enough of you. And she's connected the front and the back mm -hmm. by just this small island of bone. And that's called a bridge. A bri well. The bridge of her shell. The bridge of her shell. Who are her predators? Um, there would be all kinds of animals that live in her habitat. Again, freshwater um, animals, maybe an otter. Maybe a raccoon, uh, maybe an alligator if it happened to get a hold of one. Um, when they're younger, birds like herons and egrets that would be water birds mm -hmm. near the water. Um, they could maybe swallow, you know, a baby turtle. Uh, they do have softer shells when they're first. Okay, because I was going to say that's kind of mm -hmm. tough to. Uh, you can't digest the turtle shell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so these. 